we present Hollywood. We bring you a radio preview of Cecil B. DeMille's new Technicolor drama, Northwest Mountain Police, starring Gary Cooper and Madeline Carroll, with Paulette Goddard, Preston Foster, Robert Preston, Lynn Overman, and Akeem Jamiro. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. Cecil B. DeMille. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. Rugged new countries need courageous, heroic men and women to build them. This is our nation's proud tradition. This, too, is the story of our great sister democracy, Canada. Here in this vast wilderness that Canada calls our Northwest Territory, the historic events of our drama take place. It's a story of empire and empire builders. Men and women who built a nation out of earth and blood and stone. But it took sacrifice, courage, struggle, heartbreak, and misunderstanding. Out of that misunderstanding came an armed rebellion. And to bring order out of chaos, there was only a little band of gallant men in scarlet coats. The Northwest Mounted Police. The Canadian Northwest. Here, the first traders from the old world intermarried with the Indians of the plains and forests to found a new race, the Metis of Canada. Here, for two centuries, these half-breed hunters and trappers multiplied and prospered, a law unto themselves. Then surveyors and home builders pushed westward, bringing laws of land and property which threatened to end forever the free ways of the wild trails. In 1885, resentful and confused, the half-breeds, under the leadership of Louis Riel, revolted against the advance of unwelcome law. Louis Riel, he's the best friend we've got. You better advise him to go slow. For 15 a year we go slow. Now we go quick. If your government say no, we make new government. You can't fight the whole British Empire. <laughs> 50 mounted police. Only 50. In all Canada, only 500. We got many thousand half-breed. Big Ben and Crawford got 10,000 warriors. The Indians won't follow Riel. Maybe they follow Jacques Corbeau. If you bring back that whiskey-running killer, you'll deserve what you'll get. We ain't gonna fight! That red coat, she skinned pretty easy. Make nice round! His head, she split pretty easy! If we want Riel, we'll get Riel! <laughs> Quietly, efficiently... Fort Carlton, headquarters of the men in Scarlet, is made ready to meet any emergency. Late one evening, through the gate of its wooden stockade, rides a tall, lanky stranger in shaps and jingling spurs. An orderly leads him to the office of the post commander. A man from Texas, sir. My name's Dusty Rivers, sir. Texas Ranger. I just landed up here, following a man we're after for murder. Orderly, tell Sergeant Brett I want him. Yes, sir. Ranger's Commission. Commissioner's Deputy, United States Marshal. Mm -hmm. I've uh, heard of your organization, of course. Thanks. We heard of yours, too. Thank you. I've come at rather a difficult time. Oh, Sergeant Brett. This is Mr. Rivers of the Texas Rangers. Howdy. Texas, did you say, sir? Right. Texas is a United State. Yes, sir. The Rangers are an organization of constabulary rather like our own in uh, some respects. Yes, sir. He's here on a police errand. Seems he's fed, filleted, and offered a bath. Very good, sir. That's mighty hospital of you, sir, but I want to get started on my... This way, please. <laughs> Gentlemen, this is Mr. Rivers of the Texas Constabulary. Rangers. Hello, Colonel. Hello, Hello. 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 It seems another criminal has leaked out of the United States, and he's after him. Have <laughs> his saddles ready for marching order in the morning? There may be action. Attention to roll call. Constable Ackroyd? Here. Adams? Here. Logan? Logan! He was slightly overheated and went out to get a little air. Ronnie Logan's out for air again, huh? Yeah, and I'll bet I know her name. You mean Louvet? Sure. That little happy devil's got him crazy. Ronnie? Can you be so late? Sergeant put me on potato patrol. If eat potato is other woman, I eat your heart out. <laughs> Louvet, I was peeling one million potatoes just because I talked to you in Batoche. Then maybe I don't eat your heart. I just keep him here inside my heart. Since me, molasses. Ronnie, maybe police no let me come to Fort no more. Why? My father, he come back. Who's your father? He's very bad medicine. 
Oh, I remember. Long time ago, he could bear me down stick. Give me a piece in my hand. Oh. Well, I'll tell you what we'll do. I won't bite him if he doesn't bite me. <laughs> really? You know, let my father bust us up. Listen, you little wildcat. You're the only real thing that's ever happened to me. Nobody. Nothing could ever make me let you go. Cinema gum, I love you so terrible. That I feel good. I'll be peeling potatoes the rest of my life for this. Into Canada at last rides Louis Riel, accompanied by Jacques Corbeau, notorious half-breed whiskey runner. Warns Riel... Blood will run like water. Boast Corbeau. Blood, you won't notice it much. The mounted police wear red coats. In their wagon train is concealed a death-spitting Gatling gun. Two mounted policemen accost them, demand to inspect their possessions. What's in the carts? Take a look, if you want. No, you have no warrant. These aren't ordinary times, mister. Open it up. Two mounted policemen are shot. The revolt begins. April Logan, Anglican mission nurse from Batoche, finds them dying and rushes them to Fort Carlton. With their last breaths, they tell their story. Constable Fenton, what happened? Wagon and train, sir. Carrying a Gatling gun. Did you recognize the men? No, sir. But funny, foreign-looking saddle. Did it have a big silver horn? Biggest I ever saw. What the boy saw was a Mexican charro saddle. Probably ridden by the man I'm after, Jack Corbeau. Corbeau? Immediately, Sergeant Brett organizes a patrol to search for Corbo. As he prepares to leave Fort Carlton, he finds April Logan in her wagon, ready to return to her post at Batoche. Dusty Rivers is with her, and Todd McDuff, half Scotch, half Indian scout, waits nearby. Jim, in love with April, and already jealous of Dusty's attentions to her, rides over to them. April, I'd rather you didn't go back to Batoche. Hey, Sergeant, what part of the parade do I ride in? I'm sorry, but you're not going with us. April, with Riel on the war, I'm Patton. sorry, too, Sergeant, but I am going with you. Corbo is wanted for murder here. He belongs to the mounted police now. He belongs to whoever catches him first. There are some things about you I don't like. Well, you're not exactly perfection yourself. This isn't Texas. You ought to obey him, you know. Do you? Not always. Well, lady, your judgment's good enough for me. Sergeant Brett! Change of orders from Regina. No patrols to leave until we're reinforced by Colonel Irvine. It'll take them a week to reach us, sir. Corbeau will have Big Bear on the warpath before then. And to the Blackfeet. Couldn't you wire Regina how serious... No. The wires were cut. Two minutes after this came through. Does the order prohibit sending out a single scout? No. I'd like the inspector's permission to proceed to Big Bear's camp alone and try to keep him loyal. Ah, no. Nobody but alone would consider it. It's a ticklish job, Sergeant, but permission is granted. I'll leave at once, sir. I'll leave at the same time. But you can't make an arrest in Canada. Well, if I got to have a nurse, give me the Scotchman. A nurse at my time of life. Let up. You'll accompany Mr. Rivers. And gentlemen, I, I hope you keep your scouts. I'm aboard, Major. Get up. Are you riding with us, Jim? No, the other way. I'll send you a postcard. You know, Canada's a lot different from what I expected. The scenery? No, the people. You haven't had much time to tell about it yet, have you? Sometimes it strikes you at first sight. I mean, I mean, uh, well, you can usually figure a man by the way he handles his horse, but women are different. What do you expect Canadian women to be like? Oh, kind of like the scenery, good to look at, but kind of frostbitten. But, but you're not. I've always understood Americans were too busy even building and selling and, and shooting each other to waste time saying nice things to women. Oh, we get around to it now and then. That must be appreciated by your wife. Who's wife? Aren't you married? I've always held that a bachelor is a feller who never makes the same mistake once. <laughs> Do you believe that? I did, till mighty recent. Uh, do you think a plant or something from up here would do all right in Texas? I don't know Texas. Even the moonlight's warm and soft along the Pecos River. Do you have fast horses in Texas, Mr. Rivers? The fastest in the world. Um, betting they kind of keep up with the men. <laughs> but in a world torn by strife, there is little time for lovemaking. Dusty and Todd McDuff follow the trail of Jacques Corbeau to the same Indian camp where Sergeant Brett is headed. The Indians seize and bind them lead them into the tent where Jim Brett and Corbo are pleading their separate cases before Big Bear, chief of the tribe. The Kakito. Who these men? Spies to count your men and horses. This man is no spy. He comes from far away to take Corbo. 
who killed in his nation. Like mounted police want Corbo because he has killed here. Their blood can spill like other men's. Now, look here, Chief. Uh, before you turn that man over to the mounted police, I got an order for his arrest. We got no war with Redcoat yet. But they no take away, my friend. You both come alone, you both go alone. Eku Simwe, Chief. Big Bear was a great chief. His friends will be sorry for him. <laughs> now Big Bear will join his blood brothers and fight for Riel. Big Bear, you're a great chief. Why, we heard of you way down in Texas. But how do you know who's the best fighter, the mounted police or a corbeau? The great killer of men. You better get out. Rivers. Kiamapik. Talk. Why, this fellow's killed in Texas, and he's killed in Canada. He must be a great gunfighter. But has Big Bear ever seen him kill? How do you know all these yarns are true? I'll show you if they're true. He offers to show you. All right, let him kill now. Who he killed? Me. Oh, Slide my guns back in the cradles. Untie my hands and I'll hold them out. Then tell this tough man killer to go to it. A boy to Manish up. Husky signal. Man's daft. He's great. Now tell him to kill. Nip a half. Go ahead, Corbo. Draw. Tell him to draw, Big Bear. He's been a bragging about all the folks he's going to kill. Tell him to start on me. Kill. Draw, you yellow polecat. You're a good hand at shooting men in the back. What's wrong now? I won't foul a great chief's lodge with the blood of a dog. He runs yapping across the trail to save his red coat friends. But the medicine gun, she'll roll them all in the dark. I have not seen this yet. Then look. That gun's strong medicine. Before the sun has set three times, I'll bring you the red coats of the mounted police, made redder with their own blood and full of holes like a fishnet. Bring me in your hand their empty coat. Red with blood, the four three sun have set, and my brave will take the whopper. Four three suns have set. Corbeau will wear iron on his hands. And so the curtain falls on the final scene of our radio preview of Northwest Mounted Police. This is the climax of Cecil B. DeMille's great Technicolor production. And we know that the sweeping spectacle and dramatic action that follow will thrill you as you've never been thrilled before when you see it on the screen. This radio preview of Northwest Mounted Police presented Gary Cooper as Dusty Rivers, Madeline Carroll as April Logan, Paulette Goddard as Louvette, Preston Foster as Sergeant Brett, Robert Preston as Ronnie Logan, Lynn Overman as Todd McDuck, George Bancroft as Jacques Corbeau, Walter Hampton as Chief Big Bear, and Montague Love as Inspector Cabot. Also featured in important roles in the motion picture are Akin Tamiroff and Lon Chaney Jr. This preview was produced in the Paramount Studio in Hollywood. This is Melville Ruick speaking. <laughs>